Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm Jordan. And today we're joined by a very special guest. The nominee for rising star Twitch streamer, Froger. Hi, everyone. Public health expert, Twitch streamer extraordinaire. Fake socialist. We yeah. just, you know, <laughs> Fake socialist as so. soon as they start earning money. You wouldn't buy yeah. a house, right? No. Under any circumstances? Oh, yeah. When All you right, earn well. money, this podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> We are actually, me and Jarvis were very grounded. You know, we're like regular kind of guys. Like, but actually, we're like you. <laughs> we're filthy capitalists and we want all your hard earned dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what? Give them to us. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, how you doing? What's up, Frogan? I'm tired. We were out really yeah. last night. We're, so, we're all so sleepy. So, though, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, we, last night, I got a, <laughs> I got a text from one of our friends. It was like, "Hey, can eleven people come over to your house tomorrow or today in a few hours?" And I was like, "Okay." Uh, it's like we're gonna go out to karaoke, and I was like, "All right, sounds good." And then that happened, um, <laughs> and it was a good time. <laughs> we got Korean barbecue. We sang some songs. I went to bed at two a.m. When did you go to bed? Four, four o'clock in the I, morning. I'm. It, I'm so impressed that you're here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had my place is like in the middle of like bumfuck nowhere, California. Oh no! Well, Walnut, like no one's gonna. Mm, and that's okay. like 40 minutes away from here. Yeah. yeah. Also, you drove last night, which I feel like when I fly to a new place or a new state, I'm like never renting a car. I'm just like Ubering around. So the reason why I started renting cars when I travel is because one time at LAX, I was booking an Uber to my hotel, hundred fifty dollars. And that was the cost of renting a car for four days. So I was like, fuck it. Like, wow. Yeah. That really does put it into perspective. Yeah. I genuinely, it is so predatory <laughs> because I'm like, well, it's this or live here. It's this or I just fly somewhere else <laughs> or I start working at the, at the TSA, which uh, I don't think they'd be psyched about. <laughs> uh, last time I came through customs, they asked me, uh, as they sometimes do, because with an H1B, they kind of, well, they, they want like a validation, right? They want to be like, well, do you know what this is for? I'm like, oh no, it's fake, but I didn't think about it. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't look up what plan. I had to do. <laughs> Sir. It's like you have a fake ID and they ask you when your birthday is and you punch them in the face. And yeah. Like, I don't have to tell you that. I yeah. know my rights. <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate TSA. It's so, I, I imagine it's a breeze for you. <laughs> yeah. so, it, it's actually so, you hate it because it's so good and efficient yeah. and you want to do bad things. <laughs> That's Listen, what they yeah. think. All three of us are actually, we're on the same poster. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like a movie poster with us in the TSA. <laughs> Yeah, we're b boys dancing. <laughs> I literally got TSA pre check because I was like, okay, that'll yeah. like alleviate my time. Yeah. Flying. I got fucking randomly selected and bomb swapped again. I'm like, what, what the is the point? <laughs> that's fucked up, dude. That's, that's so motivated. I because I also so. got TSA pre check because I don't like being at the airport and I want to mm -hmm. like reduce the amount of time that I have to be there as much as possible. And I never get anything. I, I believe I can't have it. Damn. <laughs> because of what I did. Oh yeah. Well. <laughs> Have the audacity to be born elsewhere. Yeah, you were the, <laughs> <laughs> you're the reason that we have to take off our pants when we go to the airport. <laughs> yeah, you don't you have the, to do that. The pants <laughs> bomber. <laughs> no, no, you don't. You can stop doing that. Oh, okay. That's, you never noticed. But I me. like it. Oh, yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> so you don't know what the TSA is. I feel like. <laughs> you're just taking the, off your pants near a plane. Oh, oh, it's not the trouser service authority? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> they don't wash them. Then. Oh, <laughs> so I that's see. Not, yeah. I go, um, just for one. <laughs> Could I get these? Uh, for one. <laughs> expedited. I'll take a ticket. Um, um, how's California treating you? I love California. People keep telling me to move here. Move. <sighs> no, I'm scared. I, I feel bad about telling people to move because what if they have a bad time? <laughs> no, like, I love California. Like, I love all my friends here. But I'm just like... No. Michigan to California, that's like so fucking far. It's far. What would be the catalyst for, in theory? Is it something you even think about or is it a big no-no? No, I've been thinking about it because my lease is up in June and mm. I'm like, I want to move, whether it be like within Michigan or to LA. I know it'd be the best like, career move to move. Right. But like the inconsistency of like streamer income, I'm like, what if I like fall off and then I lose all my money that I can't pay my rent that I'm like, that's I don't know what the fuck to valid do. valid anxieties. I have awful news. I think you might be the only creator I know that worries about that. Because <laughs> we, we and everyone else we know is like very confident that everything will stay the way yeah, that the it is. Yeah, the thing is, is we always is... earn the same amount of money every time and we know exactly what to expect yeah. and you're the problem. Just so. don't don't have fear, I guess, is the feedback to you. It's, uh, that's just, that's very reasonable. I think yeah. just being a, it is a dream job. It's mm -hmm. a very cool gig to have, but it is, 
it's getting more and more normalized and there's more and more of a path, a sustainable career path, but we are not there yet. And there's a ton of unknowns associated with going into this that you don't have for like your traditional career. So it's a huge leap of faith and it's a huge, it's a huge risk. And for anybody who want, is considering being a content creator. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, under any circumstances. I mean, I, I like had a full-time regular ass career and like saved money and then did it as a hobby mm-hmm. until, and then even when I switched over to doing it full time, I like had saved up to where that I like didn't need to turn a profit like immediately uh, slash I was already earning stuff from YouTube. And even then I had a lot of financial mm-hmm. insecurity. That's exactly what happened with me. I was, so before I was a full-time streamer, I was a public health scientist. Yes. And then I started streaming as like a hobby. Right. And then it turned into something I never expected it to. I was like, you know, I'm playing games with my friends. I might as well stream it. Right. When did you start? Um, I started August 2021. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. 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 I mean, you're actually, I think I would call you a rising star. <laughs> yeah, I'm so um, But unfortunately. Do you want something for it? Yeah. <laughs> you want, you uh, would, you, this uh, is you, actually. I would consider you a rising star, but unfortunately, we we're going to have to boot you from the podcast as Nathan Stans is on the way. <laughs> um, and he's going to take your spot. <laughs> Um, he is going to be in town today. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> he like robbed me hours. last year of the award. Yeah, that's what I was referencing for those uh, who mm-hmm. did not watch the stream rewards last year. <laughs> it's just continuing to rise star. <laughs> people are mad that I got nominated again. What? Oh, that's what, how peculiar. That's so, people online have been complaining yeah. about that. Yeah. You, you're only allowed to. You can you, only rise you, once. You can only rise once and then you plateau. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can, you can. Rising Girls Award. You know what I mean? It's not like regular. It's like par- how Parasite shouldn't have won international and best films. Like, not fair. People mm. were saying I was a diversity pick of Can we? Nominees. Okay, hold on. Dude, <laughs> fuck like that. they would be penalized at all for just not doing it. It's wild <laughs> how everywhere I go, I am like a diversity pick. I remember when I first started making YouTube videos about tech stuff because that's like where I – like first started just because it was getting views. I was like, people said I sold out by doing what I do now. And I was like, I sold out by making videos about tech because I didn't want to do that, but I thought it would get views. <laughs> anyway, people would be like, you only got an internship at Google because you're black. And I was like, oh, but also I'm smart and good at my stuff. <laughs> or it's like, you only got this because, and then now it's like, you're a industry plant with YouTube because, you know, because they need more diversity creators or whatever. It's wild. You're an industry plant on Twitch, not but the thing is, is that only white people watch Twitch. They don't need anyone else. You know doesn't what I get? Them. People are like, you only wear the hijab because you want that gets you viewers. I'm like, this doesn't make fucking sense because you say women show their boobs to get views and I'm like covered head to toe. Like, <laughs> what, the fuck do you want? <laughs> what, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm simply existing here. There's that? like an exact amount of material you need to wear <laughs> proportional to yeah. your size. There's like rules and a series of like, well, like it's like a BMI. <laughs> the, the double standard reveals the like true intentions, right? Because you've got, you've got um, the same people that were decrying like um is that a word yeah yeah uh the the same people that were like whining about hot tub streamers on twitch are now the people going w streamer for like the dude who was like getting blown on on (laughs) kick or whatever like and it's like okay well so what is the common denominator here uh it's you know what it's like it's like when people call out the diversity pick thing it's like when they when like Bad Bunny got nominated, and everyone was like, "Who the fuck is this?" The Amerocentrism. What the hell? What's he? It's, it's gobbledygook music he's making. What's he saying? He's not even in English. I fucking love Bad Bunny. I don't understand Spanish at all, but like, he's literally one of my favorite favorite artists ever. But he's also it's just good music. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good music, and he's also the most popular. <laughs> like he's everywhere, literally the most streamed artist in the fucking world. Yeah, and people are like, "Oh yeah, him." I don't know who that is. I've never listened to a song before. It's like, okay, do you want a fucking cookie or some shit? Yeah, like, like literally. Oh. I hate when people are like, well, I've never heard of you because <laughs> oh, that's because, but you're boring. <laughs> it's like a weird, <laughs> yeah. it's like if you're, it, yeah, it's weird. Like if somebody just goes, well, mm, Tom Cruise, sorry, never heard of him. It's like, what, is that a flex that <laughs> yeah. you like are under a rock? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a lot of exposure to stuff. Do you like being referred to as Frogan? You can call me whatever. Like, Well, I like calling <laughs> you Frogan because it builds the brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, of your streamer persona. I feel like whenever I come to LA, 
It's all Frogan. It's all Frogan. It's yeah. all Frogan. Yeah. It's all at Frogan. You're like <laughs> Michigan, Morgan, she's dead. It's actually just Frogan. <laughs> LA now. Frogan. LA Frogan. You know, I'm trying so hard to get the fucking like F R O G A N on Twitter. This mm. bitch Fiona Rogan hasn't tweeted oh, ever. Damn. That's nepotism. She's Joe's uh, friend. <laughs> Did you, something I noticed, this is very minute and weird, and I'm wondering if you picked up on it. Twitter recently changed their font. Yeah. To where the zero now has the hash. It's really important. Yeah. And it, it, your uh, at on Twitter is the one where I noticed it happen because <laughs> you've got, you know, the fro, the yeah. zero. Yeah. Um, it seems targeted. That seems mean. Yeah. I, I did hear Elon Musk was not a fan of you and he <laughs> yeah. requested yeah. the font change I to was, spite you. I saw, I was like, what the fuck is this? Because, I mean, I could get away with it if my name was, like, all capital letters, but I feel like capital letters ruins the aesthetic of things. And I like all the lowercase. I know what you mean. I am also a lowercase Andy. Um, <laughs> maybe a sentence that's never been said. Um, and yet it's never been more applicable at any point in history. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the moment, because I want to talk a little bit about your your story. Mm-hmm. So, the because we've, like, had this in our own lives. But what was the moment where, not that you decided that you were going to do, you know, like content full time, but what was the moment where you started to doubt your path where you were like, hold on, maybe there's an alternative journey I could be taking. So after, so when I got partner, um, earlier that year, I got partner in November, 2021. And when I first started streaming, I was like, my goal is to get partner this year. And my friends were like, well, that's like literally not possible. Was it like three months? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, I went viral on Reddit Ooh. and that kind of like pushed my viewership mm. on LSF. Oh yeah. But like the only way to, I mean, like you can't, it's not like you're going to grow on Twitch, the platform yeah. that has no discoverability mm-hmm. features. But it is also a diversity pick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Industry mm-hmm. plan. Yeah. LSF course, has yeah. diversity quotas. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the diversity quote is to break them fucking down as people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally, it's like a self hating thing. They're like, yeah. we hate this, but also we have it. But then I got partner in November. Uh, Hassan rated me uh, mm. as like a celebration of partnership. And Aww, that, like, cool. like, that's like when things like picked up. Like, yeah. I sustained viewership and I started making like stable income and I started making more on Twitch than a scientist. And I was like, okay. Um, I, at that point, I was like streaming 40 hours a week and working 40 hours a week. Oh, my God. So I'd work 9 to 5. <laughs> also, I was nap. dead. <laughs> yeah, I really was. 9 to 5 p.m., like my office job, sleep, mm. go live again at 9. And around like 3 to 5 a.m., sleep, and then repeat. Oh, my God. I didn't even know how I fucking did it because like now I'm just like. I did a similar thing where I was like waking up. I think you probably remember this. Like, because Patreon would start at like. 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. So I would wake up at six and I would like write a video and then like film and then edit sometimes and then go into work after that and then like work a full day. And that sucked. <laughs> and it like burned me out. Like it really fucked me up for like a while. Um, but so kudos to you. That's very difficult to pull off. Um, no one knows how you did it, but we're glad you did. Is science easy? Um, I mean, to me, it kind of is. Hey, yeah, that's, true. That's, true. that's that STEM shit. Let's fucking go, <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's Get like, out of here. He went to film school. What's happening? Um, <laughs> I, 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 but I'm part of the Facebook page. I fucking love science. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've got a full back tattoo of Neil deGrasse. Yeah, I should say. You ever asked my last name? Um, it's Degrassi. <laughs> Degrassi. With some Drake in the wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. It's He's about like, my wait, favorite scene. Neil it's Degrassi. Going, uh. Neil Degrassi Ty- Tyson. It's uh, Drake in space. <laughs> um, Rolling through space. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling through space. He's spinning like an asteroid. <laughs> so one thing that I want to I want to kind of give you your flowers on. In the sort of hater discourse, I feel like there's an easy thing to do, which is to say, oh, you got raided by this big creator, you know, you, not everybody has that. Not everybody's going to get that opportunity. But not everyone, when given the opportunity, because obviously you're like streaming, you're trying to make things work. You're like putting yourself out there. Maybe you're packaging your content. You're going, oh, you know, maybe Reddit's a thing. I used to like post all my videos on Reddit and like have friends like upvote them, which is against the Reddit rules and <laughs> shit like that. Um, you're supposed to have friends if you're on Reddit, okay? Yeah. But when when things like... Do, when you have an opportunity, the fact that you retain the viewers 
mm. and retain a consistent viewership, I think says a lot about your, you know, talent and your like content for years. Like. I was really, I was shocked because at that point I had like 75 year average. That's mm. what you need to get partner. And then after the raid, like it was like 300, 200, 300. I was like, at that point I was like, okay, like maybe this could be right. a career. And then I had my annual review for work in January and I was like, I'm cutting my hours. I told my boss, I was like, yeah, I do content creation. She's like, what kind of content creation? I'm like, streaming. I didn't want to give her like any detail because I didn't want her looking right. me up. And then after the Streamer Awards last year, I was like contemplating quitting my job. Mm. And then one day I was streaming and I was like, let me see if I have a meeting in the morning so I could go long, go live longer. Oh, that's a yeah, relatable yeah, feeling. Yeah. And then I, saw, I had access to her calendar and she had a meeting set with like the manager of my department talking about my performance because at that point I was like doing everything for everybody. Right. As soon as I saw the email, I sent my two weeks. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. You would need to be like exceptionally appreciated when you're doing exceptional work. Mm -hmm. And that's generally not the case if you, you know, hey, I'm cutting my hours, but I'm still very efficient and contributing yeah. a lot for those hours as opposed to. Well, no, you have to be in pain. Like, she, to be doing a job well, you have to be suffering. She got so mad at me because, like, she was my mentor before. Right. And she kind of was like, you know, the way you quit was wrong. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I put my two weeks, like, well, with the personal relationship, you're supposed to talk about it first. And then we set a timeline for you to quit. Yeah. And then if there were ever layoffs or the company had to, like, you know – had budget issues, they're going to cut some, they're going to cut a worker without thinking about right. it. Yeah. And it's not, there's and not Uber the same is courtesy on its way extended. To pick you up. Yeah. Yeah. There's not the same courtesy extended in the reverse. So why should you? And yeah. I waited until she hired, she had three more people. She hired three more people. And then like, it was like me being gone was a loss because I did almost everything. Right. That's, I mean, very relatable. My heart goes out to you. Um, yeah. I stayed way too long at Patreon. I put in my notice in September of mm -hmm. 2018, and I stayed until February of 2019 because I, was, yeah. I was wrapping up some projects, and I was really like worried that it was going to put people in a bad spot yeah. that I was working with. Some people. It wasn't it about transition. Sound it wasn't about it. the bosses. It was about like your like sort of coworkers, mm -hmm. all, like that you were seeing every day, who like you didn't want to put in a bad spot. But even still, I didn't owe anything to the corporation. I'm glad I, you know, I have no regrets of anything like that. But when I think about the burnout that I experienced afterward, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I probably went a little too hard. Yeah, no, I, I partially for visa reasons while we were transitioning it. But when I switched, uh, started the company with Lauren and Brigham and it sounds like I'm hiding my age and 19. <laughs> uh, Jordan, Jordan Adika is 32 years old. What the hell? This is literally, I got to tweet like, because my famous birthday is wrong. Famous birthdays is wrong. Sorry, I mean, it's right and it's very funny. Uh, it says I'm 32 years old and the way I found out was a screenshot of the famous birthdays and someone saying, this is my 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> huh? How old are you actually? I'm young as fuck. <laughs> I'm youthful. I don't have to say it out loud. Say it. Come on, man. Say it. 28. I'm 28. Okay. Is that good? I'm 26. But like, what's, how about 28? Uh, mm, I mean. Yeah. Do you, you hurt all the time way yet? out? <laughs> <laughs> Do you wake up and it's like, well, I better talk to the doctor because I hurt. And I can't like, wait to be 30. But like with people that are 30, I love being like, you're like almost a half decade older than me. Do you feel, uh, so what, you worked in your original job till you're 24? I can't do math. <laughs> If yeah, you quit in yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah 24 yeah, yeah. hours before. So there's like, uh, do you feel a lot of my friends are like just creators straight out of the gate and some of them have expressed like an insecurity about how reliant they feel on like management because like I just don't know how to organize my time. Sometimes we'll just hear a story of like, yeah, I was supposed to drop a video <laughs> with like a brand deal and I just forgot. I'm like, it should, it should be on a calendar. It should be on a calendar that's on the ceiling above your bed. Where you wake up and you see it and you have yeah. 15 notifications. And I, I, I've talked to people about that and they're just like, yeah, I just didn't, it's just not part of my routine. Do you feel like a confidence because you had that grind in a real nine to five that made you, sounds like more than a nine to five. Yeah, I, I was also a manager like yeah. uh, in my job before. So I feel like I kind of carried some of that um, into content creation. Yeah. Um, and plus, like, with content creation, I will never take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I know so many people, like, they would, like, fucking die to be, like, a creator. And I'm like, yeah. I do not want to let this slip through my fingers. Because right. like, I don't know how long I have in the content creation space. Could be years. Could be months. 
days. <laughs> it could hours. be today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like looking at Jordan. You're like, it could be mu- year days. I'm not going to spoil right it. Right now. It's over. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it. And then it. Stan <laughs> flies in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a sword. <laughs> And TSA agents yeah. take you yeah. away. Yeah. It could be <laughs> yeah. two halves of Frogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like with that, like I want to be make sure like I'm on top of things. Mm. I mean, I will say that I'm really bad with emails now. Dude, that's, um, that's the dream. Like, I'm it, just like, <laughs> well, I mean, when there's a lot of ruffled feathers when you start and there's so many things going mm-hmm. on that it takes a while to get like your systems in place. Yeah. I, I feel. Yeah. There's a mythology to the nine to five because that has to be to keep yourself sane. Yeah. It has to be like, well, look how good I am at this arbitrary thing. And then you stop doing that arbitrary thing and you realize, oh, wow, that it just so, was a for lot, aesthetics. Like, I was doing it for performance. I like grieved quitting my job, like low key, like when it, because I started the research when I was 20. Mm. And I was, I like helped built an intervention and I was like, I'm not even going to see this through. Mm. Yeah. Do you get a? Do you feel like you have any benefits to your current line of work from having worked at? Aside from just being an authority on topics and stuff. Yeah. Besides that, like I feel like being able to talk to people, like no matter what, because I had to like I did a lot of like patient interaction and like surveying and all that shit, and right. I dealt with fucking assholes and all that. But I feel like just like talking with people, like so much shit. Do you, do you feel like it helps dealing with assholes now that you're a streamer? Like Honestly, you're going to play it all? I mean, I, the shit I see as a streamer, I wish I could have said to some of the fucking people. Yeah, <laughs> that's real. Um, there is a certain part of me that looks at streamers who will just like lay into them, lay into their chat when they're like being mean that I wish I could do, but it's like kind of not in my brand. And the times that I've showed the slightest bit of emotion, I've had people write like parasocial essays about mm. my behavior. <laughs> Dude, my chat, some people in my chat will like try to like fucking read me. They're like, yeah, you're single because you're like scared of this, this. I'm like, mm-hmm. like I'm talking to like, bitch. Like who asked? Who asked? Literally. They think they know you. I'm like, I'm, I had, like sometimes I'm like, you don't know me. Like, no. You yeah. don't know me. I don't know you. I'm not your friend. It's, it's And I'm not watching your stream. <laughs> it's the double-edged sword of like, we benefit from the parasocial relationship. You know, there's no mm-hmm. doubt about it. It's like mm-hmm. integral to the content business for a lot of people. It's most of growth. But the other edge of that sword is people like involving themselves way too much in your business mm-hmm. and feeling like they know you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the dark side of that is um, having to go to my subreddit and go, um, is it just me or does uh, Jarvis seem kind of rude? Or, or is, like <laughs> when he told that guy in the chat, hey, I make the rules around here. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I said that you had an issue with? Mm-hmm. And like Hassan's like calling people like pussy ass bitch and saying he fucked their mom. <laughs> and I'm just like, um, I think I'm the leader of the stream. And they're like, wow, entitled much? And I'm yeah. like, okay. No backseating, please. <laughs> we, we should kill him. <laughs> he should be good for this. I do consider myself like parasocial with my chat too. Like there's some chatters like I know like random ass shit about. And I for sure. Remember. Yeah. Uh, but there's like a line. Yes. I don't know what the fucking line is, but like when it's crossed, I'm like, yo, like. Paraso- back the fuck up. I mean, it's the oh, word. I do that. I it's do the that. word of the day, right? Mm-hmm. Like parasocial has kind of been in the zeitgeist for a little while. And I think that's in part just because the output of content is so intense now and there's so many platforms and so many creators that you do connect with to the point where a lot of viewers now the creators they watch are the people they relate to because they could have chosen a different of the 50,000 people that better right. represented them that they related to and hey man I don't ultimately I don't mind I do think it's valuable and it can be encouraging for people to care right and I don't think we would get the email, the nice emails we get without people feeling no. it to be relatability. It is hard to gauge that what's an eight out of 10. Like when is it crossed yeah. over the barrier into this is causing us both pain because you're going to push for this friendship. I don't know you and I don't want to feel like I'm exploiting right. your your interest in that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird balance. But I also think that like content creators can afford to be, I feel like uh, parasocial has a strictly negative connotation Mm -hmm, or at least currently. And I do think that we have to be honest with ourselves how much we benefit from it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's like, I get as a creator that you have to, you know, you want to set up boundaries and you want people to respect those boundaries. Absolutely. But in the same breath, like creators making millions of dollars off of people like wanting to 
involve themselves more in your business. Mm -hmm. And so it's a weird, it's a weird kind of balance. Yeah, guess what? No parasocial relationships, no Patreon. It just literally, <laughs> yeah, it literally. At all. Um, one one thing I wanted to ask you about uh, Twitch chat or just in general. Well, first of all, I have an immense respect for streamers by trade because I'm like just a we're like streamers for fun. Mm -hmm. Like I'll, I'll stream, but I'm not like a streamer. We would pass away. <laughs> like I would be no, dust. it's like I I feel like my patience is tested minute to minute. <laughs> um, but the one thing I think about you with like such a you know interesting professional background. When you say things like as a public health expert, are there people like this is a bit? She's joking. She's making this up. People think I'm too young to mm. have oh, my degree yeah, yeah, yeah. because I. <laughs> brown parent like my dad like you had to go through school like yeah back to back to back so i graduated high school when i was 17 i did a undergrad in psychology i graduated when i was 22 i did that took me five years then i just went straight into my master's program and i finished at 24 people are like how are you an expert and you're 24 years old i'm like i have my fucking degree and i have yeah. years of experience in the field but like um a lot of times people try to like try me Mm -hmm. And I like have the data. I'm like, I know this shit. Like you're yeah. fucking stupid. But it, it, that's it's a annoying. Team. It is. It's because it sucks to have to like pull rank on people. Mm -hmm. It never feels good. Yeah. It feels smug in a way that's yeah. Yeah, not fun. But it's also, I don't know. Hey man, if you're going to act like a kid, I'm going to have to parent you a little bit. No, like, that, if you think you should go to bed at 2 a.m., I think you should go to bed at 9 p.m. Because you're four years old. <laughs> okay. I feel like this is a question that is like required to ask. As a public health professional, what was the sort of start of the pandemic like for you? Because you're oh like, oh my god, all you're, the timing. You're, you're, yeah, the timing is you're like in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. So I was in, I was finishing up my first year of public health grad school, and how long is it? So two, years? two years, yeah. So the first year is like mostly classes. Second year is like internship. Um, and they're like, yeah, we're going to be out of school for two weeks. Um, and at the point, like. I feel like in school you got that like kind of gear where you're like you're looking at how people are responding to it and like how the professionals are responding to it. And I was like, okay, like this is bullshit. So right. that inspired me to pick up a health communication certi a certification because I was like, they're not doing shit. Right. Like the average uh, reading level in America is like fifth grade. Mm -hmm. True. And they're that's, talking about like mRNA. I mean, that's higher than me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I read British. Oh yeah, it's only use. Yeah. <laughs> it's just adding use and taking use. If they're away. not, if it's not bubble letters, then I can't really comprehend it. Or it's in gel pen. If it's tapestry gel till pen. I fucking die, yeah. ye oldie. What's no, a, is that like making uh, communicating ideas with literate, like making it more literate, like bringing it, mm -hmm. bringing it to a, a yeah a, a fifth grade level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which I, I even say down, but it's more like wide. It's more mm -hmm. like making it more widely understandable. Yeah, you have to like good. <laughs> cut, cut the jargon, the big words. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was a struggle forever because even at work, I used to do um, the communication aspect for like the patient facing resources. I put it in a fucking generator. It'd be like 20th grade, which is like college level. I'm like, okay, I have to like bring it back to the point where it doesn't lose the messaging. Right. It still means what it does. I remember the communication. Yeah. was so everything was so touch and go and there wasn't a great understanding yeah. about cuz cuz essentially there was a lot of fear that was just everywhere because yeah. because we the information could have very well been there mm -hmm. but the access that we as a society had to it and the translation into like you know uh lay, layman's terms just wasn't accessible really looking at it it's like so i feel like the communication of like masks versus not being masks like it was so like wishy washy that created mistrust amongst people. Right. Made people like we really don't didn't know much about COVID at that time. So yeah. the the scientists were like communicating the information as they got it. Mm -hmm. And it was like people were like, well, you don't oh, know what the fuck you're talking about. That's like, so frustrating. Why am I supposed to trust you? I mean, it's fascinating that it's not like a compulsory part of the research is <laughs> learning how to say stuff right. A lot a of scientists people understand. don't know how to do that. Yeah, that's why. It's hard. But you know what? It doesn't surprise me because in tech spaces, there is a dichotomy between like technical skill um, and communication. And that's why I always felt like I positioned myself in between extremely brilliant engineers who I could talk to like at a high technical level uh, and then was 
sort of communicating that to products, more junior engineers, like in order to get like buy-in for stuff like Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like one of our coworkers, smartest guy I've ever met, uh, terrible communicator. And so I felt like I was a translator for him. Um, like, like to help him get buy-in on like projects that we should be doing. I think that's how a lot of people interpret management. That's, yeah. that's what it's supposed to be is like translation, but it, this is so essential. There's not a job or not even career. There's not a way to live right. that does not rely on good communication for your benefit as well. People aren't going to find out that you're any good at anything. If you're siloing everything you're able to do and instead it's just getting filtered through uh, your management or uh, indecipherable email that you have to put in a generator to try and get through. I just had an insight. Like, good communication is not, you know, connected to good information. And so it makes sense that TikTokers and people who are like excellent at attention, grabbing attention and like entertaining an audience can more effectively spread spread misinformation than public health professionals can spe- spread the proper information. Look at Joe Rogan. Like he uses studies to back the shit he says, but he's misinterpreting the data and the results mm-hmm. like incorrectly. A lot of scientists, they only care about like commuting the data to like to their colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. They don't give a shit about like. Uh, uh, because it, it, for peer review reasons, yeah. right? They need approval from mm-hmm. people. And also with, I mean, you can speak to this more than us, I'm sure, but like, Academia has a little bit of elitism to its communication, yeah. right? You have to be a little verbose because it makes it seem more valid. If you submit something that's just like, mate, this is mental. So like these, this bacteria, crazy. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's- Look out. <laughs> no, but now there are, we- like some uh, peer-reviewed websites have a section at the bottom that kind of like puts it in plain terms mm. and still communicates it. But it's not public. Like, it's not made accessible. Right. Wait, what? That's so- really? Is it full? Yeah. (laughs) It's for the health professionals that (laughs) don't know anything. (laughs) That was a big thing that was frustrating. I'm sorry I I keep like relating it to my own experience, which isn't completely isn't completely um comparable, but the I remember how it's frustrating because I felt like a lot of tech is very jargon based and the the concepts were ultimately not complicated. But I think everybody was like trying to stroke themselves off and like try to like feel like really smart. And so you have to like make everything sound really interesting. And then the layman's terms explanation are like, we did the computer, but like more and like big. Yeah. Uh, So like we just uh, made the data bigger and better. It felt like an, uh, it felt like, uh, like an exceptionally difficult place to be in with partnerships and products as well, because more often than not, we were giving feedback back to people that were saying newer on the team and they want to appear informed or have like transferable skills from working in other industries. And the truth is, is that like none of the acronyms from music production are going to look impressive at Patreon. None of the, you know, I tried doing the same thing effectively. I was using a lot of jargon and terminology to try and communicate to my friends that I'd start this company with the most efficient way we could be doing things. And the truth is, is that I was not communicating in the most efficient way. I was at least on some subconscious level trying to establish a position of authority by sounding like I have a position yeah. of authority. But it's really fucking off-putting and to it's like, normal people. Honestly, though, like a lot of people think I'm fucking stupid. For me, like whenever I was in the space of like uh, STEM, I'm like, I, I didn't try to fucking like sound smart. I was like, fuck it, like. You're going to get it as you get it. Yeah. Right. But then <laughs> but then people are like, oh, you're not yeah. doing the thing. You're not jumping through hoops to sound extra smart. And so maybe you're not. And then <sighs> I hate getting too political on the show. But then you look at your like Ben Shapiro's of the world. You like say something really dumb, but make it sound smart. Mm-hmm. And then that's like, and then people treat that obfuscation of information as intelligence. Well, he serves, it's, it's, it's this perfect force field. It's like being in, uh, like elementary school and playing tag and being like, no, actually I had an energy field. No, I had an energy field up because you critique something that Ben Shapiro, misinformation Have you that Stephen Crowder shares. tried reading a paragraph that Jordan Peterson has wrote? It Indecipherable. Feels like, it feels like someone found and replaced every word with like a word that was used a hundred years ago for the same thing. <laughs> I think like it was retranslated five yeah. times. <laughs> and like the man is just, it was retranslated and then put into a generator that they get benzos to. Yeah, and it's like, and why are we talking about the butterfly? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, 
the <laughs> humble butterfly. What you'll find is that the lobster links hands with a nightmare, and the nightmare finds its way beyond. Have you seen Frozen? <laughs> yeah. It's sick. It's scary. <laughs> it's so scary. It's too loud. Let it, let it go. <laughs> um, he's just, yeah, he just loses himself. He's talking about like the volume is too loud on. On the Little Mermaid, I couldn't figure out how to open my laptop. And the Twitter TOS is indecipherable. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> all you write is indecipherable. <laughs> and you have the, tw- the Twitter it. TOS is like, don't, uh, don't be transphobic. And then he's like, I, it just doesn't make any sense. I just don't okay. understand. Everything you don't like, you call instructions transphobic. unclear. I'm gonna dead name some people. <laughs> 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 or like, oh, his defense is just like she or uh, him. <laughs> just don't write the first. You know it's wrong. <laughs> it's or, a tweet. Or, or, or they. And what is they uh, even? What in, what in the world? I, it makes me boil. <laughs> like, if, like, truly. And it's just, I mean, it must be especially insulting to you, right? To have like the whole practice of informed, informed research based information be basically just dissolved. Yeah. Like, I do, I do blame like, <laughs> like left wing, like political pundits, like Hassan does a does a really good job, like translating, yeah, like information to make it more like digestible, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but I feel like we don't have a lot of that, like for like medical data, like yeah, Fauci, like Fauci, he didn't do shit, like yeah, he was like wishy washy, but like, and he made COVID. I <laughs> <laughs> was about Fauci, Fauci probably made. That's you know, not a good idea. Just so we could make the jab, he is Johnson and Johnson. Or something. I don't know. This. I wish this was a crazy thing to say as opposed to 25% of Facebook. Right. <laughs> I, I forgot the stats, but like, I think like a fourth of people uh, think they know somebody that died from the vaccine. That's wild. I'm not sure if that's correct, but like a lot of them believe in the conspiracy theories. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, Hassan's a great point uh, because Hassan's also bro coded. So he mm-hmm. only like his method of communication, like only works for like a swath of people. Never and, gotten more hate on a tweet than when I said exactly that. I'm like, you hate Hassan because he's bro coded. Yeah. And it's, you weren't bullied, but you saw shows where people were bullied <laughs> and, and it's like, socialized. I think it's like, I think there's a ton of, like I was saying, valid critiques, but I do think that like, he, like he's a like a very valuable like I personally consume Hassan's content a ton mm. and um but I do think that his presence makes me want more people of different flavors communicating mm-hmm. you know information for different more disparate audiences it, like we don't have that like on the left very much like we have like Joe Rogan on the right and mm-hmm. like Ben Shapiro like they use like I said they use the studies they're not fucking reading it right but mm-hmm. people are like oh like they're using studies. This makes sense. Like the way right wing people communicate things is a lot more digestible than the way right wing. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's very simple to understand. It's, yeah, and plus, yeah. more often than not, the ideas are more appealing, mm-hmm. right? Because it is there's an enemy. It, it's simplicity. It's yeah, an accessible enemy. You know, the enemy is Joe Biden instead of a system. <laughs> so you know funny, I mean? by the way, creating a villain of Joe Biden. Yeah, but you are feeling more positive about the communication at this point. Maybe no. kind of no. Okay, good. COVID's over, brother. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah. Know. Well, we actually got some. I <laughs> I don't know who, it. which of it. What who of us said it, but we misspoke and said like post COVID instead of post lockdown, which was the goal. Like we were mm-hmm. talking about how, um, uh, like I think Curtis was talking about performing in an audience of people with masks. And it's kind of funny because when they laugh, it's like muffled and stuff like that. And then I talked about how I go to my physical therapy and it's mass required, which I comply with and support. You know what I mean? Uh, but also because I'm a mouth breather, I will like suck my mask into my face <laughs> and it's uncomfortable. I think we should be allowed to like have those minor gripes with the like like the situation without being like anti maskers mm-hmm. or anti like like trying to pretend COVID doesn't exist because that's not yeah. true. If like you my gotta, shit fogs up every time I wear a fucking mask. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, tough. I felt like fucking dog shit after the booster, but it didn't mean I regretted getting right. the booster. No, yeah. I think nobody else should, or that I'm spreading the fact that I felt a little bit peaky as a reason. Yeah, to not and it's get like it. I have like ten COVID tests over there. I test like every day. I have like the sniffles or whatever. Anytime like we have a big gathering, I'm like having people like test beforehand, you know, uh, or test here and like put them in a, like a, a room to like wait. Like we're doing the best we mm-hmm. can. Um, I mean, obviously, like I don't want to pretend that like immunocompromised people do not exist and we should not be taking um, appropriate precautions. And I'm always like trying to listen to people who 
have concern. Like if anyone ever had a concern with any sort of thing, like in my personal life, I'm going to try to comply with that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, it's, I mean, it's kind of bridging on the leftist infighting a tad because it's policing to to perfection. So people say, don't yeah. say post-COVID. Say, oh, oh, they get mad about you saying post-COVID. I'm like, okay. Can we have a little bit of charitability? Right, because you, you know we don't believe you, that COVID is right. over. We don't, very we're not ignoring that people are dying every day from, from COVID. It's and, just semantics. It's yeah. Like, I wear masks in stores sometimes and people mm-hmm. like fucking stare. I'm like, bitch. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, lo- I love wearing a mask now when um, I have the slightest bit of sniffles because mm-hmm. that's like normalized. Like the yeah. first time I went to Japan – I was like so thrown because I saw so many masks on the train. Way pre-COVID. Yeah, say. this was yeah, this was like 2014 or something like that. And I was like, oh no, is is this contagion? Like, is something gonna go wrong? And then I just realized it was the polite thing to do. Right. And America, it really brings to mind the like collectivist versus individualist society thing, where you know if you're focused on your community, you're more likely to want to like care for that community. Um, Whereas America is so individualistic sometimes, it's like, well, I my personal inconvenience, I'm now making it your problem. You know, I knew we were fucked. So the day uh, lockdown got announced in 2020, I went to Target to like get some shit. I, like I saw people like fucking stockpiling toilet paper. I couldn't get shit. I was like, okay, I'm like, so what do I do now? <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> I don't know how your brain would not hesitate for like just. Use two sheets instead of five. Yeah, it's you know like the I mean? last of us, and they're like, I've got to get my bunker for just me. <laughs> yeah, just just me and the people I care about, and, and everyone homies. else, fuck them. Yeah. Like, we're at a point where, like, I feel like people are normalizing COVID. Like, they're just like, simply accepting it existing. Right. Like, but there's a psychological yeah, effect yeah. to, like, living under this, like, sort of fear, this hum of, like, COVID always, like, pervasive, like, in. Yeah, and, and I, I, I don't want to shame, and I, I, I'm biased because like we were, might like called out as even a strong word, but like some people had some things to say about how how we were treating it, and I do think that there should be space for people to express emotion regarding this collective experience right. that we all had, especially when we're not advocating for like harmful mm-hmm. things, you know. Did you have any family to c- c- argue with about the, oh, about the, the, initially? Believe it or not. My family was fine with it. Like they were like, like they got vaccinated. They like masked up and everything. My mom's a nurse. So she worked with like a lot of COVID patients, but I was like shocked, especially like on my mom's side of the family. I was like, I feel like this would be like fucking tooth and nail to like push them to get the vaccine. They're like, yeah, no, like we're getting it. I'm like, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only people in my extended family that were even mildly hesitant about the vaccine coincidentally were like Jordan Peterson guys. Mm. For whatever reason. Huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Seems like you'll make any kind of sacrifice for comfort. Seems like you'll do sacrifice literally anyone and anything. So yeah. that you're like, ah, trans people scary. Ah, I don't ah. think they exist. But also if they do, don't go to the bathroom. Or do whatever. No bathroom. Don't go to any bathroom, please. I'm crying. I'm thinking about, I don't know, the the reboot of Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> it is concerning. Could he really find Dory <laughs> after all the... Is Michigan better for masks, by the way, or is it worse in California? Um, I mean, LA is its own thing, I guess, but it depends. Like on the area, a lot of like ninety nine percent of people don't wear them anymore. Yeah. Mm. They've given up. I um, I remember going to Florida. I want to say this was for Creator Clash last year. Maybe that was why I was in Florida. I like took an Uber to my hotel and I had my um mask on, mm-hmm. and the, I got an Uber and they were like, "You don't need that here." And that happened like, to me a couple weeks ago really? in New York. I, I, I was like, okay, this, this is going to be such an embarrassing story. So I had my AirPods in and I had a mask on. And I think I was like mouth breathing on accident. I was mm. like, listen to the music. It was like, you know, you can take that off, right? You're breathing kind of loud. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he was like, you don't need it anymore. It's a crazy thing. I, the, <laughs> you don't know my lungs. <laughs> like, like chill. <laughs> also, you don't, know, fuck, you don't, you don't know me. Like I, I could be uh, very ugly. <laughs> Y'all might not have a lower half of my face. Yeah, my Someone breath escaped. could stink. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, there's a in the when I was back in the UK over COVID, I was I was with my uh, mum during like basically through COVID, and uh, we uh, found a place we could stay because we both didn't live in the UK prior to that, 
and uh, we moved in and it was near my hometown and, and they're very well-intentioned, but like get out style political mm. leftist, you know what I mean? Like uh, leftist to a certain Obama point of time. comfort with a leftist with a 200K plus salary or it's like, oh, something's gone wrong. <laughs> um, just found out about tax at 40 years old. They are my state. Uh, they... But when the skepticism started to happen, the emphasis on skepticism. You weren't allowed to be a denier because that had like bad connotations, but you could just be like, well, I just I just don't think it's as severe. I none of the 40 people I know died from it, you know, that live in this town. And uh I would go back and forth from from to see um my mum when at one point she was in hospital, and so I would take a, a taxi or the bus every single day and either another passenger and people in the uk do not talk to each other on public transport it is insane that that would ever ever happen and every single day somebody would ask why i'm wearing it which is a weird way to phrase it because mm. like well you know why you can like think it's odd or maybe it's time to move yeah past you're it. like i have the last of us disease yeah, yeah. i'm fungal yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm actually my little like fungus has come out of my mouth <laughs> i'm so. a clicker yeah <laughs> yeah so you don't want to see what's below here hey why are you wearing that <laughs> <laughs> there's a study going around on twitter it's like making its rounds about how um it's basically kind of like pushing people to get covid they're like well if you get covid i'll explain it to you if you get covid uh if you get it a second time you're like I think it was like 89% less likely to die or be hospitalized. But guess how you can replicate that? Not getting COVID. Yeah. The vaccine. Oh. Yeah. It's crazy because like the vaccine is like a little tiny COVID. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like a little COVID DLC that you like put in your body and then you get firmware for it. Yeah. <laughs> I want the full one. Yeah. I want the deluxe package. I want full COVID. I want a raw dog COVID actually. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Have you had it before? Um, I had it once. I was ahead of the curve. I got it like March 2020. Me too. Oh, I thought I was going to fucking die. Like pre-vaccine. And I got it. It was when I was, I didn't have like a place to say it. So I was staying in a hotel and it was moments before official lockdown was released, basically. Oh, wow. North of England near the, the family I had up there. But I couldn't go and stay with them because I was sick as a dog. And we were now like, okay, how real is this thing? <laughs> right. What's the name of it again? Which number is it? But also people that seem to be dying. Uh-oh. <laughs> So I just stayed in this hotel for like four days watching, uh, I'm in a fugue state, watching clips from the show Monk. <laughs> Tony Shalhoub saved Never my damn life. Never a full episode, only, only clips. Too confusing to watch a full episode, but seeing a bit where he has to like watch his hands, I'm like, that's, that's like me for real. Yeah. Uh, damn, if you sing on the birthday song and everything. <laughs> yeah, it was a straight up dude. It, I just thought I was going to die. Yeah. I was just like, too. oh, this isn't a flu. This is the end. This is consumption from like Moulin Rouge. So they wouldn't test me. So I don't know if I was... Uh, they wouldn't? They wouldn't test me, no. Uh, but my blood... So there's something called like D-dimer in your blood, which indicates clotting. And that was mm. a symptom of COVID. They thought I had clotting in my lungs. Um, I, I was fine. Uh, Did but they, they test you for anything else? <laughs> no, they wouldn't test me. So I called my mom, who's a nurse. I lived in Baltimore at the time. Right. And... I faced my mom and she was like, test her for COVID. They're like, we're not testing her. She was like, this is literally a fucking symptom of COVID. Like, test her. Like, no, we're not testing her. We're sending her home. They wanted to give me an Ativan because they thought I was also having an asthma attack, but I drove. And I was oh like, my God. I'm like, it's not this. I'm like, I know what like anxiety. I'm at anxiety. I know what anxiety is. This is not feeling like anxiety. Yeah. I literally can't fucking breathe. <laughs> that <laughs> really does feel like, that feels like when, um, like in the, like 1500s, they'd be like, she just has the vapors yeah. or yeah. whatever. It's hysteria. Like, yeah, these women, they, they'd be so crazy. I don't know, take an aspirin and relax. Yeah, or I'm, here's some, I don't know, alcohol. Here's some leeches for the bad humors. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, what the fuck? I literally felt like I was going to fucking die. Wait, what is the, don't they do, don't they do something if you have clotting in your lungs? <laughs> it like oh, it's just, it's just clotting. It's just oh, clotting. Oh, no, you're fine. You're oh, fine. You, it's a heart attack. It's fine. You can just actually go. Oh, it's necrosis. <laughs> I did develop like long-term like uh, health issues after I had oh, long no. COVID. I'm, um, I'm oh, fine now. Like, I was, like, one level away from emphysema, which is something you get for smoking, like, Fucking years. Hell, man. And then I had, uh, I was, like, borderline having a heart attack. Um, my heart rate would not go down. It was, like, 165. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> for how long? Uh, it happened, like, one time. I went to the ER. The doctor was, like, what the fuck? And, like, I was, like, Stop I, it. I, I, no, I walked into the urgent care. I was, like, yeah, like, I was, like, I can feel my heart racing. And then I sat down like, okay, they put the thing on my finger, like, get to the back. They're like, you got to lay down. And I was like, I was like, can I just go? 
It's like you have to go in an ambulance. You're literally about to have a heart attack. I was like, what the fuck? Like That's I didn't terrifying. think it was like serious. I was just like driving. I was like, oh, I could, I could kind of like feel my heart beat. I'm nervous. Yeah. I don't like the doctor. <laughs> um, yeah, they it's like white coat me. syndrome. Yeah. yeah. And then I went to the, when I got to the ER. That's when I knew it was serious because the doctor was like, why the fuck is it? She's stabbed. I'm like, I'm like, I literally feel. And I called my mom. I'm like, yo, like this is a lot more serious. And like I thought it was. Gonna- That's crazy because I. I got COVID after getting, I think, the first booster, mm-hmm. and I was fine. Like, I, I had, like, a mild cold. Mm-hmm. And so now whenever I get a cold, because I had a cold a couple weeks ago, I'm like, this is basically what it was like for me to have COVID, so do I have COVID again? Mm-hmm. Um, but now I keep getting I keep getting boosted. I keep getting the updates, the, um, the firmware updates. Oh, yeah. My entire changes. family had COVID, like, recently, mm. except me. I was nice. chilling. How many people in the house? Uh, so my mom, my two sisters, and my brother got it. My my niece got it. My grandparents <laughs> got it. Oh, <laughs> like no. I, I don't know how I dodged it. My dad got it. Damn. Um, but it was the emphysema. It, like made you stronger. <laughs> yeah. I'm so fucking glad my lungs are like normal now. Like that shit was the worst. Did your family have it really bad? Is that like a thing? No, because like, for- I, I lived away for um, mm. like in so I was alone. Damn. But <sighs> the COVID emergency declarations ending. So like the free vaccines are ending, free testing, oh, yeah. the free treatment, like that's all gone. You know, you were talking about how you you knew we were fucked earlier. I knew we were fucked because I think it was maybe the third booster came out and it was free. And I like went in and got my like flu vaccine and also got a new booster. And then I um found out that like no one was getting, they were free mm-hmm. and like nobody was getting it. There was like no line. There was no anything it was just it, it, it was accessible everywhere and no one was concerned and i was like oh okay i think the rates for like the booster now is like it's so low i don't mm. want to give a number because i don't want to be yeah, wrong yeah, but yeah. it's like less than 20 percent. i'm pretty sure yeah i do think there's a fourth one that i need to get yeah i or didn't get that one fifth? yet no. i was gonna get i think fourth i didn't yeah. get the fourth one yet i was gonna get it before twitchcon but they ran out Damn, and I, I just never rebooked it. I believe it is because of my specific uh, visa status because I stay obviously such long extended periods of time here. But I need a NHS uh, in my Apple wallet, NHS approval of boosters as required because the UK also has like timelines for certain events still, which is why people get it. Because it's like, I, I can't go see Coldplay. <laughs> oh, well, fuck it. I need to hear bad music. Yeah. I got him. Got him. <laughs> Finally. Actually, you fucking roasted Coldplay's ass. Uh, there is... I'm supposed to have... sound. I'm supposed to have certain updates. Is that a Coldplay song? You know... Uh, and they let me in anyway. I just didn't the have the booster. Why the fuck did Coldplay play with Beyonce at the fucking Super Bowl? I saw a clip of that like the other day. I was like, was when the fuck did that happen? Fever dream. Fever really? dream. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, wait. Chris. Maybe this is the time to bring it up. Frogan, I'm beefing with you. Jesus. We're beefing about uh, when we were young fest. Oh, the millennial lineup? Yeah, that's me. I'm the millennial. I'll just say, you know, um, as we as we find this, I want to say thank you to everyone that has started writing down the timestamps of when we changed the way that we're sitting. Yeah. Because that has already begun. I want to give a specific shout out. Jacob, I don't know if you've been tracking that as well. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. Notes. I saw you shift and I was like, somebody's in a fucking time. Yeah. Zone. Oh, I'm ready now. <laughs> Which Jordan sitting pose are you? Let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> yeah. What's according to the comments? What's the most bisexual way of sitting down? Yeah, We've received a lot of feedback. Um, yeah, today I'm keeping my feet on the floor, and I've that's never felt more. <laughs> I've yeah. never been more straight and sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hello, welcome to Sad Boys, a show about formal greetings and sitting up in straight. posture, about the maintenance of your lumbar. Yeah, that's true. Um, I brought a foam roller for everyone here today. <laughs> um, okay, so. When we were young, fest. I guess it's fest. When we were young, show. Fest. (laughs) Fest, yeah. So last year, they announced a concert. It was originally going to be a one-day event. And the the set list, set list? The guest list? The lineup. 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 Ding, ding, ding. Um, That was a test. (laughs) The the lineup was insane. And everybody was like, this feels fake. Yeah. It's like, it was like My Chemical Romance. I got it right here. It was like My Chemical Romance, Paramore, um, Avril Lavigne. um, It brought boys and girls out of hiding. The All-American Ajax was my two favorite. Like Taking Back Sunday was there. Dashboard Confessional. The Used? Yeah, it was a big, yeah, it was a big... um, for 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 an era of you know this was I was fucking with all of this um, for much of my life, um, and I wanted to go, 
And then I got ner- I saw people tweeting about how like it was going to be a disaster. Me too. And then I didn't go. So, disaster in what sense? What because it was like there's it's a no twelve way. hour festival. Yeah, with all those people. Ugh. And people were like, "Well, some of the bands didn't even know they were playing it, and they said that." So a yeah. lot of people were skeptical. And then the time came. It was a three day festival. First, it got canceled because of the winds, and everyone's like, "Oh, this is gonna be a fucking disaster!" Like it was a scam. See, yeah, we told you, fire fest. The second and third days, though, and the second day, and then the third day was like the next weekend. Second day went smoothly. I literally considered booking a flight to fucking Vegas. So I was like, I can't miss this. Yeah, I heard it was awesome, and that sucks because now I got I missed it. And so they just announced the new one, and the lineup is different. I think it's all different bands. Uh, Pierce and Veil's on there again. Oh, okay. Um, but oh, 303 was in there. Um, and this year, uh, I, you know, Frogan tweeted, let's see, Frogan tweeted, um, the lineup this year is absolute dog shit compared to last year. And look, that's okay for you to feel, but I personally, I wouldn't say dog shit. I, cause I saw, I saw this and I was like, oh, I fuck with like, like in here, I'm like, okay, well, I was a weird Green Day head when I was in middle school. So I fuck with Green Day. You've taken a bold swing, Frogan. I, I, will, I will tell you. <laughs> I fuck with Blink-182. Um, I a little bit fuck with Yellow Card. I very ironically, not ironically, fuck with Simple Plan. Um, I very ironically, not ironically, fuck with Bowling for Soup in a weird way. Rise I was ag- like weirdly into Bowling for Rise Soup. Rise Against and Do Some Damage. Thrice is a very funny inclusion. <laughs> Thrice is funny. Uh, Gym Class Heroes... I think Gym Class Heroes' first album is so fucking good. And what's the biggest L on here for you? Yeah, what's the biggest L? So okay, I used to love All Time Low, but they had they have allegations. Like I've literally oh. seen All Time Low twenty one times. <gasps> like I used to like go to every single like Midwest show. So like had I gone, I would have loved like All Time Low. <laughs> yeah, um, are you going? No. Nah. I mean, I thought about it, but like, I don't like love anybody. Yeah. Um, I know. It's also tough with concerts. I think if I, I feel like I need some friends to like make an event of it mm-hmm. and then we need to like spend too much money to get like a comfortable experience. It's like the same weekend as TwitchCon too. So it's Oh like, yeah. Like I know like the Rex. Michelle movements. Branch? What is Michelle Branch doing in here? She's just attending. Yeah. Oh, I do love water parks, sir. Shout out to Less Than Jake uh, from my hometown of Gainesville, Florida. Really? Yeah. It's like, this is like before my time. Yeah, this is a little bit millennial core. Like, you got Newfound Glory in here. They're older. You got Sum 41 in here. Um, we're not that different in age, I so I felt a little bit called out. <laughs> um, 30 Seconds to Mars, they're going to get Jared Leto in this piece. <laughs> um, Five Seconds of Summer, I think, still has a very big stand. Oh, they do. Like, following. Mm-hmm. Is Jared Leto going to, or does he have a replacement? <laughs> Like a genuinely. That's a good question, but I do think it is it's also just very small. I saw. I saw <laughs> Sorry, buddy, to have the Joker be so small. I saw that. a video essay about how like Thirty Seconds of Mars has like a weird like cult thing. I saw that too. Yeah. yeah. Allegedly. Um. Come on the show, the Joker. I remember I saw the Academy is uh when I was at eighteen years old with uh this band the cab which is not together but if they were playing then i would actually consider it i don't see them on here or anything um yeah but, I'm, I'm more into like the new age like rock like pop punk are you listening to any like brand new like I, what is the state of pop punk these days so i am uh i like this band called bearings they're bearings. yeah they're canadian and I found out about them at a concert last year. Mm-hmm. They're opening for one of my favorite bands, like Grayscale. They're kind of like, I want to consider Grayscale pop punk. Mm. Actually, not like the Midwest, like pop punk. Got it. Uh, they're really good too. And I feel like pop punk is low-key kind of dying. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like it's been dead. Yeah, it's like a but, lot of them are like shifting out of that sound. Yeah, because like I, like, I would listen to, I still like, I still f- bump all of the fucking... Like I was like, we got some Fall Out Boy records over here. We got some old Panic, rest in peace. Uh, when Ryan Ross left, that's when everything went oh my downhill. God. What, okay, so when I saw that Brendan Yuri announced like the breakup of Panic, I laughed, but then I read the statement, and I cried. I'm like, damn, like this shit's over. Like no more fucking like 20 year anniversary. If uh, you get sweat out tour, what the fuck? I know. What bothered <laughs> me though, more importantly, was he had some like allegations. Yeah. 
And it's I was like, in a security guard. And they made and fun the of the hit rate on public no. beds is bad. <laughs> it, it, it really is because like a lot of them were like low-key pedophiles on Warp Tour. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like just nothing, you know, knock on wood, happen to Fallout Boy. Uh, you know, get well soon, Joe. Um You know I helped Patrick Sump before. What? Let me see if I can find it. So I also Pete Wentz is black. Everybody remember that. Pete Wentz told me I could get into medical school. And you actually called me weird before too. What? Because I'm I was a fucking weirdo. <laughs> I really like, like and he was right. No, so when I was on Stan Twitter when I was growing up, like right. I loved like YouTubers. I was like a Dan and Phil bitch, a like big time <laughs> rush, um bands, Fall Out Boy Panic, All Time mm-hmm. Low. Yeah. And I made like socks. I made half of it was like Pete Wenz's face emo, and mm. half of it was like his regular face. I don't want to one. So I'm going to show you. Socks are the entrance point for pop punk merch. Sad boys idea. Half of your face on one, half of your face on the other. Dude. You can put them together. Yes. Like a medallion. I feel like we'll do some cool, we'll do some cool merch. I just, um, this is hearkening back to a conversation we we're having about jargon and like turns of phrase and stuff from industry. I was in a meeting with a new merch partner working on some, like a merch drop that I can't say anything about. And, uh, and I said the phrase, they showed me a website mock-up and I was like, uh, I have some questions later about the checkout flow, but blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, you're the first person we've ever worked with to say the phrase checkout flow. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, I'm probably the first person who used to work in your industry. <laughs> oh, that's fun. This is so precious. I was 17 years. Shit, it was like nine years ago at this point. This is so precious. Um, that new profile pic. That's actually so awesome. Mine, I mean. <laughs> new profile pic. I, uh, would you be pissed if I got the username Frogan without I, the zero? I would be so mad. I would rule. Wait, best Fall Out Boy album? Foley. I was... I I thought no one... I would never hear anybody say that. I think I, think I agree with you. But I feel like the common answer is Infinity on High. Mm-hmm. And I felt that way for a long time. But as time has gone on, I have gone back to Folia de. <laughs> and it is kind of just straight bangers. It's a skipless album. I can it listen to that album, album on your feet, not skip any fucking song. Yeah. With Infinity, I'm just like, there it's it's a great I album. I think I played them out. I think I play I played the song so much that like I know them all front to back, but for some reason they don't have the same. Mm-hmm. Like if they ever came on, I would be like like geeked. But I still like in my car will be like I need to listen to Foley dude have you listened to Mania their album Mania is the worst shit I've ever yeah. heard in my entire life I you know I was trying to like um, exposure therapy myself into like the <laughs> the weird like EDM fusion sound Fall Boy I'm excited about their new album because it feels like it's a little bit more balanced into something that I can like get behind there's a few wait hold on the new songs What's on Mania? have been so- Young and Menace that song literally that was my final straw. Really? I kind of, that's, I, that's the furthest I got onto, um, that's the furthest I got into the exposure therapy. I think I listened to it like a hundred times on like a plane ride. And I was like, you know what? I fuck with this. The, like the young animin is. Sorry, I lost my voice I- yesterday at karaoke. <laughs> When I got to the chorus of it, I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Because it's like, I felt like all the bands I listened to for like that rock sound like lost it. Yeah. And I was like. There's so many. I think that song, and this is so inside baseball. Who is this for? But the, um, the there's pieces of that song that I feel like I have flashes of something I would be into. <laughs> you know, because like there's the like, we've gone way too fast. I'm like, okay. Okay, I, I mean, I'm into this, but then it like kind of swells to this like arena rock, like EDM like thing You're where it has a drop. I'm like, I don't need a drop in a Fall Out Boy song. Right. You broke up because she changed and then yeah. you get back together a few years later. Like, oh, you're still different. <laughs> yeah. This is the problems of the Zoom. Are you seeing them? Uh, I actually, one of my friends texted me and was like, we should get tickets and I haven't done it yet, but I might try. You should. I think I will. I, need, I think I wrote it down in my notes of something I need to do. Oh, there's also Sad Summerfest. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the dog's down. <laughs> Hell yeah. So this year, it's like basically the Warp Tour replacement since Warp Tour is dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, it's Taking Back Sunday, the main, the main Motion City soundtrack. That they're on the 
They're on the lineup for We Were Young Fest. Paris, Mom Jeans. Mom Jeans is like Chicago pop mm. punk. But in the summer, my fucking concert, I'm seeing Big Time Rush like three times in one week. That's in one yeah. week? Are you traveling? So are you like Michigan, Michigan, Ohio. Damn. Oh, yeah. They're I've loved them ever since I was 12 years old. So you ever picked them up? <sighs> no. Mm. Who no, have I loved since? I feel like I've been a Paramore fan for a very long time. You seen that music video album. that um, Jeremy made? No, after he left, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I do love Paramore though. Um, I want to do their. They did a. They do a cruise. Parahoy, yeah. Yeah, and Wait, I want to go Parahoy. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. And it's like it's like concerts like every night, uh, and like with different set lists and stuff. And I've watched like bootleg recordings of it, and it's so sick. Um, yachts, oh, yachts and cruises to me seem like they're only in movies. Yeah. When you hear about like a like a Disney cruise and you like live yes. with Mickey for a while, that's so funny. Dude, imagine if Twitch did like a cruise and so like TwitchCon. But it's mascots dressed up like you. <laughs> it's not <laughs> yeah, really. Imagine. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> I feel like my frogging. intro to like pop punk was uh when I was in middle school band. I guess Green Day I've liked since I was 12. Um when I was in middle school band, this guy Malachi he burned me, like I think Green Day had nine albums at that point, and he like burned me all of them um, on, and then I would, I put them in my computer and I went into, this is millennial core, by the way. This is like ASMR um, millennial t- tunes right now. So, yeah, you like it, so POV, freaks. POV, you, ju- you just got home from middle school and your friend burned you some CDs. Mm-hmm. Um, so you put them into your uh, Pentium 2 processor computer <laughs> And uh, you load up iTunes, and using the Grace Note uh, song database, it identifies um, it identifies what the album is, and then you sync it onto your iPod, mm-hmm. uh, your iPod video that came out in two thousand five, and the box had like U two on the um, like a U two music video on on, on it. While, while you're doing that. Uh, he's playing Newgrounds games and yeah. is like really bad at them. And you're frustrated you're going, because you need to get involved. Yeah, you're going to bed and you're like, I'm going to listen to Jesus of Suburbia, the greatest song ever written. Uh, it's a nine minute <laughs> rock ballad opera perfection. I was uh, so, time. it was in retrospect kind of embarrassing how much I would listen to American Idiot and be like, hell yeah, oh yeah. Mm. Oh, I, yep, me too, dude. That is my cultural experience. Dude, suburbia, we got that. <laughs> I would imagine somewhere. I used to ask my mom to burn me so many CDs when I was younger. She taught me how to do it, and I was like eight years old. Hell yeah. That's funny. I used to, and I used to like burn CDs for literally everybody in my class, too, because I was the only one that knew how to that, do yeah, it. Yeah, someone's got it. Someone someone <laughs> had LimeWire and a CD burner, and you'd just like bring them, and you would get those um, spools or whatever <laughs> of fucking oh, yeah. of, of CDR discs. Or maybe you would have CDRW discs, which were rewritable. Oh, dude, next level. Yeah, the amount of <laughs> the amount of calories burned on just moving media around, mm-hmm. just giving like, hey, do you want to see this movie? We can watch it in four days. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I need to wait till school's over for the week. Go to the mall. Wait for my allowance. Buy the physical thing I need for me, and then spend an afternoon getting it ready for you. Did and you- then I can bring it over, and it is mostly a shaky cam with a guy standing up and getting in the way of the camera, so you can watch like the Mask of Zorro in 240p, and it my- cuts off before the ending. Do you like what is what was your first experience with piracy? Because I remember um, I got LimeWire. And I didn't use it much because I had dial-up, which is a yeah, it's another a millennial memory. core thing. Um, I had dial-up, and it took me like an hour. But I I got home from school one day, and I downloaded the song "But It's Better If You Do" by Panic at the Disco. Yeah, and I listened to it, and I was like, "This is the greatest song I've ever heard in my life. I have never heard this sound, sa- these sounds in this way before." I just, something special is happening right now. And then I was convinced they were like the most talented, best band in the world. And I kind of stand by it. Rest in peace. Except for Britain, yours kind of sucks. You know, Ryan Ross actually started a band again, pre-COVID. They toured the West Coast. And then they were doing like a thing where like, if you've reached like X amount of donations, they'd come to your city. Oh. Um, 
and then the like, COVID happened, and then they fucking died. They, well, the tour died, not the. <laughs> you know, no, the band died too. Like, they, I don't think they do anything anymore. Oh no, I like, no, but like you said, then COVID happened. No, and no, they no, all no, died. no, not like, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> Why do they only tell this to health experts? I feel like we should have been told. <laughs> well, yeah, what was your first experience um, sailing the seas? I've never pirated anything. I yeah. don't. Damn, I don't do. Like, you know the feds are watching. You're like yeah, I've never broken the law. I don't do illegal activity ever. Yeah, I was. Bu- I was too busy not jaywalking. <laughs> yeah, my favorite hobby. Following the rules of the road. I definitely didn't download the All American Rejects growing up. Mm. There used to be my. So I got into them when I was seven. You started early. I did. My mom. My mom was like into like Fall Boy Panic. Oh, like, oh, what? Shout out to yeah. mom, dude. That's sick. She got me into like all the music I listened to. That's I awesome. still do concerts with her too, but then now I'm just like going alone. Yeah. Going with friends. You're cramping my style now, mom. <laughs> Jordan, I want to hear about your first piracy, but because um, we're all admitting our crimes today. But I want to first say uh, it was clear that Brendan Yuri was the problem when it was always <laughs> new members of the band around him. And it was like, oh, it seems like he just is tough to work with, maybe. One of the bases, Dallin. He Dallin left, Weeks? He left because he bullied him for being Mormon. Oh, I heard about that. <laughs> that is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I heard he's just a mean guy. Like, so I met Brendan Yuri before. Yeah. And I met, it was like the whole band. And I was like, they're like introducing themselves. Everyone's like, who gives a shit about him? Like, he doesn't matter. Like, Dennis told me that about, like, one of the other band members. I, f- I forget his name. Oh, wow. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, So there's this band, The Cab, that was discovered by, um, like, I think that they gave Spencer Smith or something their demo at, like, a show. And then they got, like, signed to, like, Decadence Records and stuff. And um, so they they had this song with Patrick Stump and Brendan Yuri, which is a hot fire banger called One of Those Nights. It's so sick. Um, and I saw them, why am I telling the story? And there's no reason for it. Um, nope, there's no reason for that. Never mind. But you, you didn't say anything, I guess. You pirated their album. Oh, 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 they're, uh, they had a, they had a, um, guitarist who was like way too talented to be in a pop punk band, but then he later toured with Panic at the Disco and I was like, oh, okay. Um, his name is Ian. Something with an S. I do. Hmm. Damn. Wow. Too talented. <laughs> well, all right, Jordan, what was your first piracy? Uh, the, uh, mm, I don't even know if it was, it was uh, maybe it might have been piracy, but I was really, for some reason, obs- obsessed with watching a double feature of The Matrix Reloaded, had not seen the original. And then the Mel Gibson rom-com, What Women Want. Have, are either of you familiar with What Women Want? It's one of the most awful worst things. It's a movie about Mel Gibson who drops a toaster. Oh, no, a hair curler? Some kind of electric cosmetic tool because he's a marketing executive and his com- very misogynistic guy. Somehow Mel Gibson was able to get into that mindset. He's a method. Uh yeah, he's been being that way his entire life and afterwards for the for the role of Jimmy Blimmy or whatever his name is. And he's a marketing executive because it's a movie from the 90s or early 2000s. And he has a meeting with the Japanese or something, you know, that thing they always do. And he can't get into the mindset of a woman. I need, I've got to market these things, but I can't. Women are crazy or whatever. And he is testing out all of the the products they now have to sell at home, including uh, maybe an electric shaver or something, and then actually drops in the bath because he's also trying out a bath bomb or whatever. Through this basically dying, just having a cartoon electricity, like, you know, Home Alone style, you see a skeleton, then he dies. He just, I guess because it's products marketed to women, he gains the ability to read women's minds. <laughs> and what the? The, this entire premise seems like it would be set up for, wow, you thought women were so two-dimensional and you were so misogynistic, but now you understand the dimensions. But the whole movie he walks around and all he hears is like, my period for the whole movie. <laughs> I miss my handbag. It's so sexist. 
and he's right <laughs> in the in the what women want universe he's like women are so vapid and then he's correct and then he just uses it to sleep with like a woman he knows oh it's like the end of groundhog day he's like you did it <laughs> yeah. you slept with this woman good that nice good the moral story was you gotta get powers <laughs> Um, <laughs> to get laid. <laughs> and so, then I think he has them forever, so he just spends the rest of his life hearing his significant other's thoughts. Well, Frogan, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Oh, I'm glad. I mean, you're welcome back anytime. Uh, is there anything that you're up to that you want to let the people know about? Uh, voting for the Stream Awards, perhaps? Yes. So I am nominated for the Rising Star Award at the Stream Awards this year. I think voting ends March 6th or 4th. Yeah, it's time. It'll um, be out before then. So yeah, vote for me. Uh, URL on screen. I, I can't lose tw- two years in a row. Yes. <laughs> That'd be so fucking embarrassing. <laughs> please let, please let. Please don't make me let lose. this happen. A regular yeah. DiCaprio. <laughs> I'm going to be Jake Gyllenhaal, fucking nominated and losing every fucking time. Uh, um, so we end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We, we love, love you. And we're sorry. Boom. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving, girl? Moving on, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, all you want it. Gucci girl, get you rich for me. Uh.